Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called Man's Best Friend. Written by Battlelox underscore. But humans have used these tame beasts to great effect in battle. They are smart, fast, strong, and most of all, vicious. Halt stared at the line of text on his screen. He had heard many horrible things about humanity's war beasts, enough to drive away any lesser scientist. But Halt was not a lesser scientist. He continued typing. I have obtained a sample of tissue from these beasts. We have identified that these creatures from Earth reproduce via instructions encoded into a strand of molecules known as DNA. While the initial tests to reproduce this DNA and follow these instructions have failed, our most recent trial is proving to be a great success. We will process the power of these beasts for ourselves. Halt looked through the glass to the tube of liquid, where a small, pink creature was slowly growing, day by day. Soon enough, the beast would be ready for birthing, and gods help him when that day came that he had to control the beast. The creature was small, which was a surprise to Halt. Unlike his own species, it seemed that the beast did not emerge into the world what he developed, but instead was nearly as helpless as it had been in vitro. It staggered around its environment, not even opening its eyes for the first few days, and occasionally it wailed helplessly. The sound was pathetic, a neutered version of the piercing howls that brought panic to the minds of humans' enemies. Halt sighed as he pulled the Omni's environmental suit. He could breathe the same atmosphere as the creature, but his superiors still insisted on every protective measure imaginable. They were terrified of the beast. Halt's own fears had greatly diminished over the last few days. He had been the first to discover that the beast didn't even possess the hard exoskeleton, but was instead partially bare flesh attached to a sturdy but small endoskeleton. It was an important detail, but one that had never been observed before. None of the beasts had been observed outside of their armor. Humans always recovered the bodies of the deceased beasts, even at the cost of additional human lives. Command insisted that they must be hiding the great power within these beasts. Still, he did not appreciate the concept of being in the same room as the beast. He had done his best to avoid it, but on the first day, the beast had refused to consume the carefully concocted nutrient blend from the bowl on the ground. Instead, when Halt brought in a bottle with a slightly different nutrient blend, it latched onto the bottle, sending him scurrying out of the lab. On the second day, Halt was wary of the beast's tactics and held the bottle out at arm's length. By the fourth day, he realized the beast was most comfortable drinking from the bottle while nestled on his lap as he sat on the floor. It was this close contact that led him to realize that the beast had grown a vast amount of thin strands of black tissue and that it greatly enjoyed him rubbing this tissue. The act confused him, but anything that soothed the beast would be done at every opportunity. Today, a full two weeks after the beast had been birthed, he was quite unafraid of the creature. Though growing fast, it showed none of the aggression that its brethren had on the battlefield. Even the few signs that he had marked as aggression, the direct eye contact, and the repeated whipping of its tail, were now known to be something else entirely. Halt entered the beast's room and fed it. The bottle was emptied quickly enough, but he stayed a few moments more. He was in no hurry, and neither was the beast. Helden scurried around in circles, her nails clacking against the room's floor, she wagged a tail happily as Halt entered the room. Easy there, Halden, he said. He had taken to speaking to the creature for reasons beyond his comprehension. But the creature seemed to appreciate it, and even responded at times. It made sense. The humans must communicate with these beasts somehow. He stripped off his gloves of his protective suit and rubbed the creature behind its pointy black ears, and the creature sat down 
and closed its eyes in appreciation. The texture of the creature's hair, now so familiar, had been foreign at first. It had given almost tickled the senses. There was no word for it, but he felt the sensation must be the exact opposite of the word hard, if such a feeling existed. When he stopped, Haldon started sprinting around the room rapidly, changing directions at the speed of light. Apparently, she had entered one of her moods where running was the most important thing in the world, and nothing could stop her. He made a mental note to procure a larger environment, and also a note that these zooming moods made her even less suited to war. And by this point in the experiment, a full human year after its inception, he had been making repeated suggestions that the creatures were ill-suited to war. He was not sure why, but he did not like the idea of the beast being used in military applications. Halden zipped past him, nearly knocking him off his feet. He chuckled and withdrew a nutrient chunk from his pocket, synthesized to imitate the flesh of a creature from Earth. Sit, Halden! The creature immediately spun around, trotted over, and sat in front of him, her front paw slightly dancing with anticipation. Catch! He tossed the nutrient chunk in the air and held and caught it in a vicious maw, the only part of the creature that seemed suitable for fighting. He laughed again and knelt down and rubbed Halden's black and brown hair. Halden panted, exhausted from the exertion of sprinting. His joy faded slightly. The creature was thriving and he had even begun to train it, but he had yet to discover even the first steps to training Halden for battle. Halt and Halden stood before the assembly. Halt had a length of rope looped around Halden's neck, similar to how humans controlled their war beasts, but it was not necessary. Halden sat patiently at Halt's side, calm despite the obvious disgust of the members of the assembly. This is the result of your years of experiment, Halt, the Commodore snarled. Yes, Pat. With all due respect, sir, I do not think it wise to use the creature for war, Halt replied. It is too. If you say friendly, as guards are my witness, I will cut your budget to shreds and fire you and ensure that the beast does not live to see another day. Halt felt a chill run down his body. Permission to return to my lab, sir. I need only a bit more time, he said stiffly. The assembly muttered quietly, and the Commodore's face showed signs of obvious displeasure. The assembly is electing to give you one more of your human weeks. Give us results, Halt, or else that is a threat. Halt whined quietly. Halden gently stroked her neck to quiet her. They were crammed into a cargo hold of the ship but it was the only way for them to escape on such short notice. Halden looked at Hal with her big brown eyes. He sighed and pulled out the last of the nutrient chunks, which she gently grabbed with her teeth and swallowed. Now what do we do, Halden? he asked. She had no answer. He sighed again. Ah, we'll just have to try and blend into Federation territory. Maybe we'll find a human for you there. That can take you to safety. Maybe they'll... Uh, he gulped. The humans had been at war with his kind for so long. He did not want to be separated from Alden. But he did not think that they would take him to her. He scratched behind her ears absentmindedly. We'll see, girl. Uh, we'll see. End of part one. Story number two. The Reaper had a scythe. I have a combine harvester. Arlac tapped his fingers nervously. He'd have gladly given up his life for the liberation of his people. A combine harvester, even a deluxe AI-driven model, was a pittance compared to that. Still, he didn't really understand what he was hearing. I, uh, heard that you're hooking up my strawberry picker to an air defense cannon? The human technician assembling the gun held up a hand, finishing up some last tweakings of the harness. He touched two wires together carefully and swore when a shower of sparks shot out of the contact. 
Set back, but not defeated, the man paused in his task to answer the farmer's question. See, uh, you're looking at this wrong. It's an AI harvester, and it works great for strawberries. But machines don't really see strawberries. They rate strawberry-ness. There's a lot of ways to manage that, but it looks for generally pointed shape, some seeds, and that's a nice red color. So you run of the mill strawberry generally receives an almost perfect strawberry in a score. But something like this. His hand dug through all the pockets of his work suit before finally finding that target. He fished out what had been a standard ferro slug before it was painted bright red and smattered with a handful of black dots. He took a moment to admire it himself before tossing it to the farmer and continuing. Well, it's not a strawberry but it scores pretty well on the strawberryness, Enough to get a positive feedback from its alignment unit every time it puts one of these in it's supposed to go. Arlax stared at him blankly. So what? You're convincing it to fill a cargo container up with painted bullets? The technician grinned. There's not a limit at how fast it's allowed to fill up that container. At no point did the alignment protocol even consider that it would be able to throw a strawberry at Mark 9. And the cargo hold is important, but the rocket it's attached to is even more so. You know what looks a lot like a surface to orbit rocket? Arlex brain click. The hypersonic missiles? The grin widened. Arlex himself felt slightly awed to have found the connection. Will it work? The human nodded. It's damn near the only thing that can. To shoot down something moving that fast, that low, you either need a dummy missile that can brute force outrun it, or enough computing power to hack the station. The Alliance is too chicken shit to send over an actual military AIs, but these myopic type digi brains are supposed to be safe for civilian use because the idea of convincing your tractor that a bullet is a strawberry and a WMD is a cargo loader was a little too creative for the morons over at the John Deere Galactic. And if that digibrain just so happens to function near the exaflop level, they're going to have a hard time sneaking anything larger than a B through this airspace. The alien's hands went to his chest as his mind reeled. They're not the only ones who would never think of this, it's... Uh... Brilliant! I wouldn't have even considered it! The tech shrugged good-naturedly and went back to retrieving two ends of wire that he'd dropped earlier. Uh, it's not coming from nowhere. There's something of a human tradition about using farm equipment for war. I'm just lucky to be a part of the next evolution of this, uh, The Reaper himself only had a scythe. Ah, uh, now I have a combine harvester. <laughs> End of story. I would quickly like to thank our tier 5 patrons, Dragzoon WRE, Quantum Wednesday, Ambrose Catull, Lord Ashrakal, Bushmaster177, Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, and Arcadian. Thank you very much.